Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Philip Tones and I'm part of the library team at Salisbury Library. And welcome to our poetry tea and chat. And I've got my tea and I've got some poems and I've got some book news for you. Um, so hopefully there'll be something of interest for all of you this afternoon. So I thought the first poem I would read is about February and it's by William Morris. The change has come at last and from the west drives on the wind and gives the cloud no rest and ruffles up the water thin that lies over the surface of the thawing ice. Sunrise and sunset with no glorious show are seen as late as they were across the snow. The wet-lipped west wind chilleth to the bone more than the light and flickering east hath done. Full soberly the earth's fresh hope begins, nor stays to think of what each new day wins. And still it seems to bid us turn away from this chill thaw to dream of blossomed May. And that was February by William Morris. And I think that's quite appropriate this time of year. It's, you know, we're wavering between winter and spring and one day it seems like spring and the next day we plunge back into winter so I thought it was a really nice poem. Now while you're um, slumbering down and keeping warm through this winter you may not be aware that um, Salisbury Woods and the Downton Library have a book chat group and we've got 204 members and this is a Facebook social group which anyone is welcome to join. We discuss uh, lots of different books and we also uh, look at libraries and books, knowledge in general and bookshops. And at the moment on the book chat group, there are reviews for Michael Rosen's Going Better. And also a review for Never Shaken, Never Stirred, the story of Anne Fleming and Laura, Duchess of Marlborough by Christopher Reinfeldt. There's also um, a review of a bookshop that one of the members went to in Lyme Regis called the Sanctuary Bookshop. And from time to time, there's lovely photos of different libraries from around the world and different books that people, uh, appeal to people or different themes. So that's the Salisbury Wilton and Downton Library book chat group. Um, it's um, on Facebook and if you want to join, uh, you'd be most welcome. OK, so we mentioned that spring is approaching. And the next poem I wanted to read you was um, an A.E. Houseman um, poem and it really talks about um, the brevity of spring and how we need to make the most of it and I think um, if ever you're feeling you know oh, should I go out and should I look at this and whatever I think this poem might rouse you to action. So this is A.E. Houseman, The Loveliest of Trees, The Cherry Now. Loveliest of trees, the cherry now is hung with bloom along the bough and stands about the woodland ride wearing white for Easter tide. Now of my three school, school years and ten, twenty will not come again and take from seventy springs a score, it only leaves me fifty more. And since to look at things in bloom, fifty springs are little room, about the woodlands I will go to see the cherry hung with snow. So I don't know about you, but I think if you are, um, you know, you think about should I get up in the morning and go out for a walk? Um, that's the sort of thing that would get me up and running and looking at the spring. So that was um, uh, the loveliest of trees, the cherry now by A. E. Houseman. Now the next poem is also about something that will get life thrown through you. Uh, last summer, for a long, first time in a long time, uh, myself and my family went on a lovely cycling holiday. And I don't normally cycle, or I haven't for many years anyway. And uh, it was really lovely, um, gentle time uh, spent with um, family, and we all really enjoyed it. And it reminded me of this poem, Going Downhill on a Bicycle, by Henry Charles Beechy. With lifted feet, hands still, I am poised and down the hill, 
Dart with heedful mind, the air goes by in a wind, swifter and yet more swift, till the heart with a mighty lift makes the lungs laugh, the throat cry, O oh bird, see, see, bird, I fly. Is this, is this your joy? O oh bird, then I, though a boy, for a golden moment share your feathery life in air. Say, heart, is there aught like this? in a world that is full of bliss. Tis more than skating bound, steel shod to the level ground. Speed slackens now, I float, a while in my airy boat, till when the wheels scarce crawl, my feet to the treadles fall. Alas, that the longest hill must end in a vale, but still, who climbs with a toil wheresoever shall find wings waiting there. And that was going downhill on a bicycle by Henry Charles Beecham. Takes years off you, I can assure you. Mind you when you're a child. Okay, so we've been talking a little bit about the wind and and the weather and the seasons. And I was thinking about um, the name storms that we have. And we had one the other day that um, was called Storm Otto by the Danish Met Office. But... I thought, well, we don't seem to have had many storms this winter. And I was looking up the names for the storms. And the first name storms are going to be called Antony, Betty, Gillian, Daisy and Elliot. But I don't think we've had any of them yet. And yet this time last year, we had uh, Dudley, Eunice and Franklin all in quick succession. And um, I thought it was quite unusual, these names, because we often hear a lot of different names in the library and uh, especially children's names and things go in and out of fashion and um, at the moment Ari, Arias and uh, Maya and William and George and Tom are all quite in fashion as well as Olivia, Olivia and Oliver um, so it's funny how things go in and out of fashion with names um, but hopefully we won't have any of these name storms but the storm season runs from uh, September all the way through to October and that's when the name storms are, uh, have, have, will come into action. So the next poem I thought I'd read in response to that is Ode to the North East Wind by Charles Kingsley. And this poem I think is uh, primarily about when winter comes in the autumn, but we will probably have another North East Wind before the end of this winter. Welcome wild North Easter. Shame it is to see, O's to every zephyr, ne'er averse to thee. Welcome back, North Easter, O oh, the German foam, O oh, the Danish moorlands from thy frozen home. Tired we are of summer, tired of gaudy glare, showers soft and steaming, hot and breathless air. Tired of listless dreaming through the lazy day, jovial wind of winter turns us out to play. Sweep the golden reed beds, crisp the lazy dyke, hunger into madness every plunging pike. Fill the lake with wildfowl, fill the marsh with snipe, while on dreary moorlands lonely curly pipe. Through the black fir forest, thunder harsh and dry, shattering down the snowflakes off the curdled sky. Hark the brave northeaster, breast high lies the scent. On by Holt and Headland, over heath and bent. Chime, ye dappled darlings, through the sleet and snow. Who can override you? Let the horses go. Chime, ye dappled darlings, down the roaring blast. You shall see a fox die ere an hour be past. Go and rest tomorrow, hunting in your dreams, while our skates are ringing o'er the frozen streams. Let the luscious south wind breathe in lovers' sighs, while the lazy gallants bask in ladies' eyes. What does he but soften heart alike and pen? Tis the hard grey weather breeds hard English men. Who? What's the soft sou'wester? Tis the ladies' breeze bringing home their true loves out of all the seas. But the black northeaster, through the snowstorm hurled drives our English hearts of oak seaward round the world. Come as came our fathers, heralded by thee, conquering from the eastward, lords by land and sea. 
Calm and strong within us, stir the Viking's blood, bracing brain and sinew, blow thou wind of God. So that was Ode to the Northeast Wind by Charles Tinkin in 1854. I'm sure we'll have another Northeast Wind before the end of the winter. And if we do have a cold snap, now all of our libraries are warm spaces and um, everyone is welcome to come to them. Uh, sometimes we will have uh, tea and coffee on offer, especially if we're having special events. So at Salisbury Library we have a games club and they meet on a Friday afternoon. And we also have a book chat uh, group who um, meet on a Wednesday afternoon and we'll be having tea and coffee at both of those. And on the first Tuesday in the month we also have our reading groups in the morning and the evening. And at the morning one we can have tea and coffee. And you might have heard about our warm packs, and I'll just show you our warm packs. So if you haven't had one, you can pick up a warm pack and you get a blanket like that, a nice little blanket. And you get a hot water bottle, that's lovely isn't it? And you also get a mug. So anyone can pick up these packs, they're in a nice canvas bag and they're available from um, your nearest library, but Salisbury, we've certainly got some at Salisbury still. Um, so if you want a warm pack, contact your local library and we'll see what we can do for you. Okay, so in your bag that you've got your warm pack in, you might go, you might decide to go shopping. And funny enough, as if this is all planned, I've got a poem about a Miss Thompson going shopping. And this is by Martin Thompson, Martin Armstrong, big bum. In her lone cottage on the downs, with winds and blizzards and great crowns, of shining cloud with weeding plover, and short grass sweet with the small white clover, Miss Thompson lived correct and meek, a lonely spinster, and every week, on market day she used to go, into the little town below, tucked in the great downs hollow bowl, like pebbles gathered in a shoal. So having washed her plates and cup and banked the kitchen fire up, Miss Thompson slipped upstairs and dressed and put on her black her second best. The bonnet trimmed with rusty plush, peeped in the glass with simpering blush, from camp or smelling cupboard took her thicket jacket off the hook. Because the day might turn to cold, then ready slipped downstairs and rolled the half rub back, then searched about and found her basket and ventured out. Snecked the door and paused to lock it and plunged the key in some deep pocket. Then as she tripped demurely down the sweet, steep descent, the little town spread wider till its sprawling street enclosed her and her footfalls beat on hard stone pavement and she felt those throbbing ecstasies that melt through heart and mind as happy and free, her small prim personality merged into the seething strife of auction marts and city life. And that's just the first bit of that poem, and if you follow it on, you'll find out what Miss Thompson really likes to get from the shops. And that poem always reminds me of an um, uh, amazing column with a statue on top at Bremen in North Wiltshire near Carn. Um, that commemorates uh, Lady Maud and her causeway that goes across to Chippenham and she's on top of her column with a shopping bag full of eggs all ready to go down to Chippenham on market day across the causeway that she built in order to make sure that people didn't get their feet so wet. So it always reminds me of that poem which is Miss Thompson Goes Shopping by Martin Armstrong. Okay so I mentioned the book chat group and on that uh, chat group. Uh, one of the things we can look at is um, Walter Scott's Historical Fiction Prize. And this is a prize, as it sounds, for historical fiction. And there are authors like Lucy Chadwell, William Boyd, Robert Harris, and Elizabeth Lowry um, on that prize. So it's lo worth looking at that prize to, uh, either on our Facebook page or online to look at um, the, what's suggested are the best historical fiction books. One of them is The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry, which I've got here, and I will take downstairs and put out on a display shelf in the library, because this uh, book that's been nominated 
is set in November 1912 and is about Thomas Hardy and his um, wife. So there's a local um, interest to this particular book and um, I think um, it's been quite well reviewed. So that is The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry and I'm going to take that downstairs in a minute and put it on the bookshelf for those who want to take it away. So we always like to finish with um, something a bit funny and of course you can't beat an Edward Lear. So here is a short Edward Lear poem and it's called There Was an Old Man in a Tree. There was an old man in a tree whose whiskers were lovely to see but the birds of the air plucked them perfectly bare to make themselves nests in that tree. There we go. Okay, well, I hope you um, enjoyed our selection of poetry and the information we, I gave you this afternoon. As I say, all our libraries are open and welcoming you at the moment. And if you just want to pop in, sit down, uh, read the paper, have a go on the computer, or just come and have a chat with any of us in any of our libraries, we'll be happy to see you. You don't have to have a reason. Just take time out from your shopping or have a rest or just come into town and have a chat and if you feel a bit in need of company and um, to warm up uh, we'll be happy to see you and as I say we've got still got some more packs uh, to give away if you want those. Um, next month um, one of my colleagues will be back for more um, tea and chat um, so in the meantime I wish you um, a good rest of the month. Take care. Bye. <laughs>